races to the glitzy $130 million industry of flashy cars, fashion, music, and style. Two competitive racers from different parts of the scene hook up with the best tuners in the industry. This is the fast and fearless story of their meager machines transformed into high-speed street rockets. Just let the car go and fly. Once I get behind that wheel, it's like... In the end, they'll square off at the drag strip to answer the only question that matters to a racer. Whose car is faster? Whether they race them illegally on the streets or at sanctioned drag strip events, speed enthusiasts have one goal, to be faster than everybody else. Right now, we're going to head over to the Ontario racing area, kind of where a lot of cars hang out. 22-year-old Obi Logue has been street racing since age 16. He owns a turbocharged all-wheel drive 1990 Eagle Talon. A lot of my big races have been with high horsepower cars, but on the street. Kind of live on the edge a little bit, so you don't, you don't always play by the rules. Obi's competitor, 24-year-old Layla Flores, is a wife, mother, and street racing fanatic who runs her car at the legal tracks instead of the streets. Layla drives a turbocharged front-wheel drive 1997 Honda Civic Coupe. I honestly, I don't like the whole street racing scene. I'd much rather drive to the tracks, get a printout, you know your times, you get more respect. Two racers, two different worlds, meet on the same track to compete for bragging rights and to see who's faster. In countless parking lots, hundreds of cars and drivers gather each night to mix it up in the underground world of illegal street racing. You know what? Being at the street races, we do it because we love it. It becomes a lifestyle. You just grow into it. It's almost like a drug. I mean, it's like half illegal, half illegal form of a drug. Like any addiction, street racing carries its share of risks and potentially dangerous consequences. I've gotten into a lot of trouble at the street races. I've been hit for probably every ticket in the book. They arrested me. They uh, try to get me for a DUI, try to get me for evading a peace officer. Anything that a cop can hit you for, I've probably been hit for. With cars traveling in uncontrolled environments, upwards of 100 miles an hour, accidents can injure or kill both racers and bystanders. My mom's thoughts on me racing have been don't get caught since my racing career has basically been on the street and doing things illegally. I think mainly I'm concerned about his safety, so I've never watched him race. I would love to watch my son race legally. That's my dream for him. All it takes right now is one cop to come rolling through here, hit his lights, and just start talking over the microphone, get out of here, we're gonna start calling this, and pretty much everyone just jumps into the cars and we all just scatter. We're gone. If a cop moves us from this spot, which is the meetup spot, we're going to a trap. The rules of street racing are there pretty much aren't any rules of street racing. We look for cars that we can beat, but at the same time, we look for cars that are, that are going to be competitive enough to gamble. You know, sometimes we're not out there to win money. Sometimes we just go out there just to run for fun. What's up, What's up man? You want to run today? Yeah, that's pretty about it. Want to run 240? What's up? Want to run 240? 240. I'm out as well. All right. So basically right now, we just hooked up a nice little little run for my boy here, and uh, we're gonna head over to a private track. It's nice, it's flat, it's pretty long, got enough time to stop. With the cover of darkness in deserted industrial areas and next to freeways, street racers run their cars anywhere they can mask their roaring engines and avoid the police. This is my girl here. She's basically gonna flag the race. The more I got to know him and the more of a passion he showed for this, the more interested I became in it. And the adrenaline rush is the same for me as it is for him. The hazards mean that uh, that car won. So we know what happened. That's free, easy money right there. Go down there, get paid, get your money, head out. Pretty much the uh, import racing culture is, it's like a whole family, you know, we have a passion, we love what we do, we live it day in, day out, and it's just a chance to go out there and prove what we can do to our cars, and hey, mine's bigger than yours is. So it's, it's fun, it's what we live for. 
The track provides racers a legal alternative to racing on the streets, and that's where Layla first discovered the rush of getting behind the wheel. Sergio actually bought the car before we were married. He actually started the racing, actually. I was a little more of the behind the scenes type of helping him out working on the car. I always thought, hey, I can maybe do better or, you know, I can go out there and race. Yeah, it was, it was basically my dream to um, race. And when Layla began to put a lot of interest in it, I was still feeling kind of, you know, jealous. Sergio didn't want to talk to me about it. He's like, nope, that's it. You're not going to race the car. It's my car. It's in my name. And I really, I tried to explain to him, I love what I do. When I'm out there on the track or working on the car, I'm in total peace. He always told me, I'm going to be jealous of you. I'm going to hate you for this. It's caused great turmoil in our relationship. It's possible that racing could destroy everything that we have. So I just hope that she realizes that that can happen. To balance between being a racer and a mother is very difficult. I mean, it just can't be one day a month. It has to be a huge part of your life. I'll say, you know, a huge part of my attention, energy, and my free time has totally gone into this car. She has to put 100% down, and someone in there is going to suffer. You stay with Daddy. You eat, eat, okay? You eat, eat. Hey! Papa, I love you. I have to go, sweetheart. My priority is my son. You know, if it came down to it, of course I would choose my son over anything, but. It's all for the car, it's for what I love, my passion, my hobby, everything, it's my life. Before going pedal to pedal, both Layla and Obi will visit A-list tuners who will work with them to increase the speed of their everyday rides. Across town, for the first time, Obi meets up with his team of tuners, Dr. Charles, Chris Hansen, and Sharon Dominguez. We're here at Autolink, home of the legendary Dr. Charles Madrid. He can do whatever it takes to probably win this race. The way I got my nickname, Dr. Charles, well, I can fix cars, I can bring things back to life. Just basically like a doctor would, but just don't have that much schooling and that much money he went through. So I just basically got the nickname Dr. Charles. I guess we're going to see what kind of car we get today. So I don't know if it's going to be like piece of or immaculate. Uh, so today? It's Monday. It's yes, Monday. It's Monday. <laughs> Monday dude, morning. To get done. Hey, the car's here, guys. Oh, the first time we saw Obi's car, that 90 Eagle Talon he drives, I was just like, oh my God, it's the car I hate. I just so despise of them from racing. It's a kind of a rivalry. I'm a Honda fanatic. I like Hondas. I'm Honda. Honda for life, dude. Honda. <laughs> I went with the Eagle Town because it's a really cheap car to find because a lot of people don't know what they have and what it's capable of. I just You're got it, yeah. so going to get hooked up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Being that it is the American version of the Mitsubishi Eclipse, it has a Mitsubishi motor in it. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, Tiger. <laughs> I fucking hate these things. <laughs> I hate Mitsubishis with a passion, dude. You know? Uh, talkers. So to hear that from him in one ear, out the other, we're all going to have fun here. It's an all-wheel drive car. We really don't have enough time to build the motor, so nitrous will assist everything. I mean, if we can go to the extreme, that's why we want to put nitrous oxide on it, upgrade the turbocharger, just to push it to its maximum potential. That's all we want. If it blows it on the track, we just want the win, so we want to do whatever it takes. All-wheel drive cars are known for their traction. However, making the engine more powerful puts additional stress on the drivetrain, especially the transfer case and axles. If any of those break, it will be impossible for the car to accelerate. We don't know where our competition will be, but if you're if they're still behind us, they'll yeah. push pull perfect. This is gonna be my first time playing with nitrous. If anything is making me a little sketchy, it's probably the nitrous. I'd really like to keep this car ready. <laughs> it is my daily driven vehicle. Obi sets his appointment. In two days, his car's transformation will begin. I'm so excited, I'm looking forward to it. Definitely want to get my hands dirty. I really hope they're the kind of guys that will let me work right alongside with them. Layla's tuner team consists of Gary Castillo, Jensen Oda, and Lanny Higa. I am a tuner. A tuner is a person that can calculate every single thing that needs to go into your car correctly and program the car. A tuner is not just somebody that bolts a muffler on. To me, that's just a regular mechanic. <laughs> when we found out we had a girl driver, we were like, oh. What are we going to do? It's a girl. Jensen. Layla. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Gary. Hey, nice How's to meet you. How's it going? It's going pretty good. You know, I know my stuff. It's not just like I'm just this chick that I can just stand there and hee hee hee. You know, I also am pretty knowledgeable about the cars. Just checking out what she had on the car. It was set up all wrong. It was just junk what she had under the hood. I mean, I really like staying with single cam, though. I'd say scrap that single cam. Single overhead is the biggest 
piece of motor there is. I really just wanted to pull that whole thing out and just start brand new. The single overhead cam engine is limited in the amount of power it can make. However, Gary has a plan. If he swaps the single cam engine for a dual overhead one, the car will have the potential for twice the horsepower, twice the speed. To not want to swap to a dual overhead is just like, are you smoking crack or what, you know? <laughs> when they told me that they wanted to take out my engine and just put in a dual overhead cam, it felt like, your kid is ugly, <laughs> you know? Anybody that owns a Honda is going to want to go to the dual overhead, unless they want to be slow. The dual overhead cam engines are definitely a better platform. I love racing, and if something's going to help me to get there quicker and a little less expensive, then I'm open to it. Just and I want to like work that. with you guys. OK, there's a vacuum over there. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> My whole life, I've been talked down to and put down and kind of shoved under the rug. It's like, just give me that chance. So that's all I ever ask for, just respect, you know? Layla schedules her appointment with Gary, Lanny, and Jensen for the following day. My crew has trap speed and but we just go out there, we set up private runs, people don't really know about us, and we'll go hit up a private track and we, we get down with the big cars. We're, we're all like, hey, everyone drives slow. Yeah, right. And I see so everybody passes. The came up, and I was like, uh, okay. Well, I was just trying to catch up, that's okay. what I'm trying to do. When we're out there at the street races, it really is another like secret society that's going on. The gambling is one aspect of it, and the gambling can kind of get really ugly. There's fights that break out. Um, I've been around when they started shooting you know, over money. You get a lot of guys that are like 16 years old out there for the first time. They don't know how things, you know, work out on the streets. It's very dangerous. And that's what pretty much the cops come out there to stop. The street racing culture, I think, has gotten a lot of popularity because of the movies that have come out and kind of glamorized, Hollywoodized the whole street racing scene. And then it's OK, and then it's cool, and that nothing's going to happen to you. Whereas in reality, I've seen too many of my friends get their car taken away or get in fights and you know i mean people bring guns and i mean it's like a gang type of a thing i don't like it the way that it's become now you know i think that it's just blown out of proportion when you're street racing the biggest danger is when people cut in front of you basically two cars are lined up they both take off they're going full throttle and uh, a lot of the idiots they don't know what's going on you know they're out at the street races just just to be there and all of a sudden you see a car trying to like bust a u-turn in the middle of the lane and uh, that's real bad. That's, that's the way a lot of people have died, and that's the way a lot of the accidents happen. It's a big risk every night when you go out, and a possibility of getting hit by a car or crashing. If a car is going down the street, and it, say, a front-wheel drive car breaks the axle, it's going to veer to that side. It's going to bang you and all of your friends, whoever's standing around you, or whoever just so happens to be in that exact section. You're going to get banged, and getting banged by a car going 60, 80, whatever a mile an hour it is, it's, it's not going to be pretty. Worst part if you get pulled over by a cop is, one, you could go to jail, two, you could lose your car, or three, you get fixed tickets that you just don't really want. Hopefully the cop's not smart enough to understand what you have under the hood, because you're constantly fixing it. So. It's not, it's not worth it. Sometimes we'll get these guys out here and they'll, they'll pretty much just walk off a track or help a cop, you know, try to stop us or something. So we get big trucks like this that'll block off a whole exit for us to get out of. And that kind of traps us in an area and we can't get out. So we kind of watch out for these kind of guys. Them and tow trucks. Tow trucks are pretty big too and they'll, they'll block us off every now and again. All it took was one time for me to get caught. And from there, just, you realize your consequence of you know, I'm busted, I'm screwed for life. So it was a scary situation. Track events are like three times a year. Street races are three times a week. I want the industry to grow. I want the street racing to not stop. I mean, of course, it's never going to stop. But you want it to get to more of a professional level. Professional sanctioned events, import sanctioned events, were, is actually built by street racers by the racers for the racers. 90% of the people that are racing in these events now, I'd say 99% of them, are actually hardcore street racers from back in the day.
We try to go to the tracks as much as possible, but you know, sometimes there's a lot of different rules that happen when you start trying to go to the track. You know, you don't get to set up the same runs that you want to. There's, you know, a, a lot more rules as far as, as far as what cars can and can't be on the track, what, you know, having the right safety equipment, and it's a total difference in mindset. Um, guys like me, we're enthusiasts. We, you know, not taken away from them, but it's just a different crowd. I've probably zoomed in and out of some cars sometimes just to kind of get that little competitiveness out of me, but as far as going to a organized street racing event, I will not participate because I have my son to think about. I don't want to be out there and someone pull out a gun at someone else and I'm even in the crossfire. I think having Elijah has made me think a little more about life and being a little more responsible. Now that the rival tuners know what kind of car they'll be working with, they'll plan their approaches to making the engines faster. The guys that I'm working here at Autolink, Dr. Charles, Chrissy, Sharon, they know their stuff. I mean, it's like working with legends. Basically, you just have fun. Everybody's there, everybody knows what to do. You know, when you get into work, you stay a little laid back. You know, we don't want to stress over it because this is something that we all enjoy. We don't get paid much, but this is our heart. You know, this is what we love to do. Charles has probably been the biggest influence in my automotive career out of anybody I've ever met. Charles is just a pure nut job. Yeah, do two push-ups, okay? <sighs> Pretty wild, just putting three of us together. I don't know if it's a good idea. <laughs> they keep me on my feet, they keep me going. But not really. Do something! Shit. Everyone has the same goal, so we blend really well. I'm gonna get dirty now. This is actually better than driving, let me just let you that. My first impression of the guys, they, they seem like really good friends. They joke with each other, just like normal guys. What are you doing, man? Uh, Talking to Gary on the phone. And peeing at the same time? Yeah, I'm telling you. They seem like they get along really well. They make a good team. Working with Gary is like working at a nursing home. <laughs> you have to change his diaper. <laughs> a gents is a garage Nazi. If you left a gum wrapper on the floor, he'd probably spaz. He gets so pissed when you don't put safety glasses on. Hey, Jensen, look, I'm going to cut this with no safety glasses, OK? Good, I hope you lose your eyesight. They make fun of me to feel better about themselves. <laughs> I feel better about myself every time I tease them. <laughs> We're just good friends as it is, and we work well with each other. Lanny Higa is probably the most meticulous person I've ever met. Lanny and I live together, work together. We kind of like dinners together. I don't know who he's talking about. <laughs> the guys we're up against, Jensen, Lanny, and Gary, they concentrate harder than we do. Hut, 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 hut. Go for the receiver, go! We might be the more conservative team. Try to do it right and do it clean and do it neat. Tuning cars is a lot of a science. I mean, just talking to a lot of the pros out there, it comes down to where it is a science. It's not really any rocket science or anything. You don't have to analyze it. We know what works. Between them and us, they're more technical. They'll draw it off the scale, do the measurements. We just do it. We'll just put it in there and make it work. Knowing Charles, his personality is unique. I used to think he was annoying, but he really does know his stuff when it comes to cars. Something you're skeptical on, then, you know, you can't stop and say you can't do it. You just got to try it. Just do it. Going into the whole thing, my first thing was, I really like it's Charles, because when it comes down to a race car, the guy can pump it out quick. Make it look like the biggest flying turd there is, but it'll win. For us, not really out to try to like beat them. We want ours to look really cool, make some power, and still be competitive. To me, it's the all around rather than just the one thing, regardless of the fact that we're going up against Charles. <laughs> Each set of tuners will have 36 hours to turn their respective cars into competitive dragsters. Gary, Lanny, and Jensen will tune Layla's car first. The shop that we're working at is huge, very clean, and very organized. I am so thankful to be here. Going into this whole thing, we were kind of under the assumption that we were going to swap the motor out. But the whole key was, was to make a street car that's fast on the street and on the track. I am totally supportive of it because it's going to get me out there and it's going to be fast. I am disappointed that I wasn't able to use my original engine. And since, you know, the race is coming up soon, we don't have that much time. Jensen was sent out to get most of the parts. He's built a really good name with most of the people we actually deal with. When Jensen pulled in with the truck and the bed was just full of parts, I actually was in so much shock. We got a lot of stuff here. Oh my gosh, the body, the hood, the fenders, the side skirts, the engine, the clutches. <laughs> it's like a 
dream come true. There's more parts to be picked up. This will be my first official engine swap, so I'm totally excited about that. I'll be tearing out axles and transmission and engine and yay! <laughs> She wanted to help with the car and we didn't want her to help. But later, we found out she was a valuable asset, so she did help us out. She doesn't like to wear gloves either. She likes to get dirty. <laughs> like... She's making us look dumb. <laughs> when I first found out we were going to work with a girl, I mean, I was just like, oh, great. This is just going to slow us down. It's usually the boyfriend that's working on the car. I just don't mind getting my hands dirty. I enjoy saying, look at these scars and blood blisters that I have on my thumb. Oh, I don't want it pink. I mean, yeah, I'm a chick, but I don't want it to be a chicky car. Pink is cool. Uh -uh. Okay. We're not going to put that. Pink is a new red. This is the distributor cap I like. It's red. It's boring. No. Heck no. No pink. Being a woman racing in a predominantly male sport, just for some reason, girls don't like me. I don't know why. You know, 99% of my friends are guys. Getting dirty, talking some bull crap, you know, just having a good time. Why are you using the men's bathroom? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I do get jealous of her guy friends. I'm male. Well, I mean, I kind of know how other males are. It's a chick's car, and she's actually going to race the 8th mile. OK, maybe I should. Oh, she's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I've told Sergio that it's nothing about anything besides talking about cars, having some friendships, you know, hanging out, just being one of the guys. She's going to have an ex, ex husband in a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I get your phone number if you want it. <laughs> you know, we basically said right now we're separated. You're free to do as you do, and it's probably going to end up towards divorce. The single cam engine comes out of the car at 4 a.m., but firing up this ride will take many more hours of work. We are going to write out a list yeah. of what we still need to do right after we cry about it. My feet are hurting me. It's getting late. Just try to stay awake. Sleep. Sleep's for the weak. Okay. You're only young once. Sleep is for when you die. Hey, where'd the engine go? In the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> where it belongs? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's throw it in the trash. Hell no. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> to see my baby torn into little pieces, it kills me. Look, your engine's crying. I know. I'm ground. crying. Since racing it is so expensive, it's almost impossible to be at a certain level without sponsorships. Tokiko officially sponsored me. They kind of gave me this whole doorway into this whole world. Select racers get free parts from automotive companies if they display the company's logo on their car. Since Layla has close ties with her first sponsor, Tokiko, who gave her $800 shocks, she wants their logo to be the biggest. But the tuners have tapped all their hard-earned connections to collect over $10,000 in parts. Layla well, probably won't want to put these stickers on there. I had planned to put a larger um, Tokiko <laughs> sticker on the car. I mean, just to make it fair for everybody, you know, but then again, you do have the last say. It is your car, so. OK. Tokiko gave me that chance. They're kind of like a mentor to me. It's more of a personal thing. It's more of a friendship. Where did they want to put it? They want it on the back, right? Either on the hood or on the back window and on the sides of the car. No, no. Sorry. I don't think Layla really understood how much was given to her and how much work was put into her car. The big Tokiko logo on the hood is ridiculous. I don't think so. If you want to put it to a dollar amount, a $800 set of shocks, whereas Dynamic gave us a $3,500 engine swap. You know, the personal aspect of it is very important to me. I don't know if she realizes that how much we had to bend over to make all these phone calls just to get the stuff. And I think as we explained to her a little more that she really did understand what was going on. So I was going to have a huge Tokiko sticker on the side, but I think what we're going to do is kind of incorporate all the stickers and all the companies that have helped us out, because I'm really thankful for what everybody has done. After 36 hours of sleepless wrenching, Gary, Jensen, Lanny, and Layla 
see all of their hard work come together as Layla's new double cam engine comes to life. We did a complete motor swap, rebuilt the whole engine, made one-off pieces, fabricated parts to fit on this engine, did the full package, power, looks, and interior. I am like overwhelmed with excitement and it's amazing. I have a good feeling we're gonna win this race, so I'm anticipating the victory. I really didn't think it would work out. I was like, oh man, we got a girl, but she really did do a lot of stuff. Seemed like most of the time she was sitting around, give me something else to do. So yeah, it yeah, worked yeah. out, she it worked really, out really, really good, actually. Help. If she didn't help us, we probably wouldn't finish this car. <laughs> so we got kind of lucky. I appreciate them giving me the time for me to express my opinions and for them to hear me out, not treat me like, oh, you're just some chick that, you know, wants to get her nails done or something. <laughs> like, go get the vacuum. <laughs> what the heck was that? I know that it's all probably in fun. So, I mean, they're really cool guys. Uh, I have to get used to it now, right? Layla will be making the power that she's never felt before. Let's see if this car can hook up and beat the other car. There will be no competition between the car that I drove in with compared to the car that I have now. The question is, can I actually drive the car? Because uh, it's totally different. It's just a totally different car. So I'm just hoping that I can do good out on the track. Don't come back if it breaks. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> the night before, Obi brings his car to Dr. Charles to get tuned. He hangs out with his crew at a meeting spot, helping his friend hook up a run. Right now, I'm just kind of go walking around the parking lot. And if we see a car that's got potential, then we'll just kind of walk up to the car, ask whose car it is, you know, ask them what's done. If they're stupid enough to tell you, then you kind of know you can beat them. And just go take them to a track and try to make some money. I think yeah. you're in Pacific. Which Civic, though, are you guys talking about? there in the corner. It's, it's a girl, too. Which, it's a girl? It's a girl, too. I, I said the Civic would probably be easiest. In the process of going out there to the street races, we hit up one of the Civics who looked like it had some power potential. Coincidentally, Obi runs into his competitor, Layla, who's excited to debut her new V16 engine at the street races. Is this your car? Who's right? My car. Do you want to run it? No, I don't. Oh, think man. I'm just coming out to check out the team. Yeah, sorry. Actually, I just put in the motor right now, so I have to break it in. Uh, I sent it in a 5,000 RPM. This is like my first time out here. I normally, I just track race. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll just come out and check it out, so. V20? No, actually, V16. What kind of turbo did you guys run with? Uh, T324. T324? Who did it? Uh, me and two other guys. Are you guys out? It's gonna be um, actually shown on like the Discovery Channel. It was like a whole <laughs> show on that. She just said the girl Discovery Channel. So you're the other group. Yeah. What? Oh. oh. This is our competition, so she kind of spilled the beans for herself. She's trying for 11s, dude. She's trying for 11s. 11. Good no, seriously, no, I don't think so. It's too, uh, it's too heavy. Oh. My heart just like fell, and I just thought, oh my god. What car do you have? What car do you have? Challenge. All wheel drive? I don't even pop my hood at the street races. And she made the mistake of letting us know everything that's going on in her car. So we kind of got to, to know what we're in for. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's get out of here. Let's go. We're in. Right. Right. You know I don't know if it's going to enable my chance more to lose or anything like that. I don't know. I think it's going to be, you know, at the track. We'll determine that. You are going against the girl. Yeah. Pretty much everyone hates Hondas because it's represents all the egotistical guys out there that think they're better than everybody else and you want to put them in, in their place. That's what I've been looking forward to go, you know, spank the Hondas out there. <laughs> this is going to be kind of funny. That was a total trip. The next day, Obi tells his crew about his encounter with Layla. Sharon recognizes her name and decides to do a little internet research to find out more about their competitor. They have 36 hours to complete the car. Today we're strictly business, so we're gonna get started and we're gonna get jumping on everything and get things rolling. Just checking out the dynamic of how you know Charles, Chrissy, and Sharon work. It's you know you feel at home. Dr. Charles, he's a jokester. He's just like anybody else. He's he's a fun guy to be around.
if I die, what I was telling my mom is don't get like, don't get a funeral, you know, don't get all crazy, you know, make it simple. I just told her to cremate me, you know, get me up in a bunch of ashes, pour me in a bunch of race gas, and put it in a race car, and then just go down the quarter mile, and I want to go through the motor. That's what I want to do. I'm working with a legend. I'm working with somebody, you know, one of the founding fathers of the scene. It's just a challenge of getting a vehicle or a motor in my hands and just building it to its potential. Okay, I don't like wearing gloves. It's like kind of like wearing condoms. I can't feel with it, you know? I need to feel what I'm like working no! Dr. Charles curses. <laughs> he cusses a lot. I'll be back. I gotta go back to work. Yeah, all that. <laughs> we did not sit here trying to be, you know, PG-13. We're out here having fun, you know? We're messing around, we're farting around, we're talking to snack about different cars. That's why Mitsubishi is a b to work on. All these parts. If it was a Honda, we would only have five pieces. Yeah. Yeah. You love one? Do you love Eagle Town? Of yeah. course, of course. You know. I, I approve of it. I would put like a little Honda symbol on here and cross it through, but I, you know, I wasn't in control yeah. of the marker at the time, so. Yeah, so I love, yeah, I love, just throw that Burn it. Chris and I were identical in both ways. He, we both can do the same thing, no problem. Chrissy and myself, we're the, we're like what they call the, the blue collar. Sharon doesn't like to work much. But basically, that's what her mom tells me is that she's not spoiled. She just lives in a life of luxury. And would the lovely Sharon please show us the difference in intercoolers? You show us the size. Show us mine. She's, she's a display girl. Make that money. Do it, do it. Make do it, that do money. the hand, do the hand. Do the hand. Yeah. She's like one of the guys, you know? You can't look at her as like a, a total female just because we know she'd get, she'd get her nails dirty. Where the hell are you? I'm trying to be on my way back. Way back from where? On my way back from promotion. I'll be back there in like, I'd say 20 minutes. You're a liar. We saw you at Starbucks. Two people called us already. Me and Charles alone are already pretty bad. There's a lot of stuff that I know he's done that, you know, is kind of like, what the hell were you thinking? I'm at a Starbucks. Well, when you come back, we're going to smell your breath. You know, we're just, you know, we're just homies and stuff. So we basically just mess around the whole time. And I tell her, get to work. You know, I got to push her else. So just tend to kick back and drink some coffee. While I was online trying to find people, get phone numbers, I was searching the internet and I found a link to our competitor's car. Guys, hey guys, come check it out. We got pictures of our competitor's car on the internet, everything. Sharon calls us in and she wants us to check out this girl's car, I guess our competitor. And we go there and look at the car and she's showing us all these different pictures on the internet. Oh, shit, it's a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no! Not only did Layla kind of spill it when she talked to us, but she also made the mistake of posting like almost every single thing that she did to her car in detail on the internet, which is like big no-no. Okay, -no. she even has, says what they are, STR decibel cameras. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's down, huh? It looks like crap already. We saw what she did. We saw what kind of motor she has, you know, so now it changed our strategy a lot. We have the same measure as Kim. So, hey, <laughs> shit, we're going to put more. They're only saying 75. We're going to put, now we're going to put like 150. Knowing that she's got, she's gonna be running a 75 shot of nitrous, you know, we're gonna bump it up a little bit. We're gonna push that. So we're gonna probably run like, you know, at least 100 shot, 125 shot of nitrous. We were doing one thing one way, and when we saw that on the internet, oh, it totally changed our plan. So you're at a total disadvantage right now. We knew exactly what to do. So if we would have used this, the car wouldn't have gone anywhere. We would have lost. We would have lost. The strategy on Obi's car is basically to make that all wheel drive turbocharged car get to the eighth mile as quickly as possible. A highly explosive nitrous oxide mixture, when injected into the intake manifold, provides an instant boost to the engine's horsepower. By third gear, we should pretty much be a couple cars ahead of her. All four of our wheels are gonna be spinning. We're gonna hit the nitrous, it's gonna take off. She's still gonna be trying to get traction. First gear brought, second gear brought, third gear, she's just barely gonna be getting it, and the race is gonna be over. A lot of people consider nitrous itself to be dirty because it's a cheap way to make horsepower. I personally don't feel that nitrous is playing dirty. I, I think it's all in fair game. You have equal opportunity to put nitrous in your car just like anybody else did. To go with nitrous, oh, yeah, it's stupid not to. But we just want to make it so extreme, it's an eighth mile, so we want to set it, like, set everything to its potential. We're basically going to take this motor and push it to its limits and kind of ride it out of the hole real hard. Yeah, because we don't want to break the drivetrain. 
but then the drivetrain comes in effect on that car, so that's why we're keeping it to a minimal, same thing within, the, within this time frame. We got a race tomorrow night, so. Right. They're taking a little bit longer than we expected. You know, we, we pretty much put on paper how much time everything was gonna take, and us slacking off, kind of playing around, it's taking a little bit longer. Time frame is very, very, very small. Right. Yeah. And so I'm down, but not under 48 hours. Yeah, if we have more. Because if, have if we day. fail, we fail. After hours of executing their new strategy, Dr. Charles and his team watch Obi's new nitrous-armed Eagle Talon come to life. Now that we finished everything, it's like more appreciation for what these guys can do. I had high expectations of them, but not only did they meet that, but they exceeded it. So it's going to be surprising. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. And we have exactly five minutes or four minutes now. Layla, watch out. We're coming out there for you. If you turn the switch on, that's what activates your nitrous. So once you activate that, your car is well activated, ready to go down the track. You'll be able to notice a great deal of horsepower after that. Yeah. Everybody knows the risk to put nitrous oxide on it. And then the bigger the shot, the more radical the car gets. So on his car, we're going to put 125 shot nitrous because we're here to win. But yeah, the drivetrain comes in effect on that car. So it's a risk. It's a big risk. I can blow up this engine with nitrous. So it's the only thing I haven't had actual experience with. So the nitrous is kind of on that fine line, but in the back of my head. OB, he's a pretty cool guy. We can't lose. We're guys, yes, the, the, the macho is. We need to win. I'm kind of happy we got OB because he knows what he needs. He knows what's going to get the job done, and he knows how to do it. The Eagle Talon has left the, the building. building. Yes. Woo! Ah. Let's go to Layla's house. Did anything on the internet explain so much? I'll find out where <laughs> she lives. Time for some beer. After 36 hours of hard work, both teams converge at the Irwindale Speedway to test their skills on the eight-mile drag strip. I have so much anticipation, I can't wait till it can occur. My only worries are that I have gone from a low horsepower car to this massive beast, and I'm just afraid that I'm not gonna know how to drive it. Knowing that you built this car, and now you're gonna put it to the test, and you're the driver, and I mean, it's just an awesome feeling. Beating my girl in a race, never, and I don't plan to. I'm not a sexist guy, but you know, no guy wants to get beat by a girl. <laughs> I'm a competitive guy. I don't want to lose. I'm going to put the smack down. Charles, his strategy is going to be like just try and psych her out, just saying stuff to her. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna distract her, you know, because basically it's a game plan. When you see him on the track, it's gonna be really straight edge. You wanna put some money on this tonight, maybe? Or? Let me see what I got. All right, let me go grab bucks. my water. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna drive, that's all I know. <laughs> Get I wanna drive. <laughs> Dr. Charles and I have some history. Dr. Charles says he never lost a race, but I beat him pretty bad in Hawaii. This is gonna be a pretty fun matchup since, you know, we have a small history and I hope we beat him. So this one is all-wheel drive, yeah? Yeah, it's all-wheel yeah. drive. Yeah. Cheers. All-wheel <laughs> drive. Having an all-wheel drive car versus a front-wheel drive car is the fact that with an all-wheel drive car, you can go there with half the horsepower of a front-wheel drive and still win. Power-wise, I say about a good 350. The year of the car that they're actually dealing with, it's been known to break, you know, the rear drivetrain on the thing. I've owned one, so I know. Knowing the weaknesses of our competitor's car, we're hoping the other car is going to break. We're estimating that it's not going to last very long. 1.6 liter. What are we up against here? Time. Ooh. B16A. Six JDM block. Could be blow up, could be bored out like 85 and a half. I think we're going to get off the line faster than what a front wheel drive car is going to do because it has all four wheels uh, spinning. What is your horsepower? Well, what's the horsepower? Like 200. 200? Uh, no, we're. we're about the same as you. Wow. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Oh, good. Really, only 250. Nice. <laughs> it's going to take the other car a lot longer to get off the line. It's a high horsepower car. It's going to take a lot more to get that car to hook. Good luck. Good luck. I will see you at the end of the track. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be approaching first. Oh, okay. oh yeah. You're yeah. You're yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm rooting for her. She's the girl. Hell yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's how it is. <laughs> Actually seeing the motor and seeing everything that they did with it, and it looks pretty nice, so we should have a nice little competition going on. <laughs> I'm ready, man. I'm pumped. I'm ready to stomp on some... Mm.
gallons, all wheel drive, <laughs> pieces of. Anyways. They're gonna get smoked. Good yeah, no Straight chance. Straight out, no chance. I told her, like, I'm rooting for you here, the girl, but dude, we're gonna win, dude. We're, we're, we're gonna win. We're it's, it's over. Yeah. All right. Wait, can we get a wall open? Can we get a wall open? After checking out each other's motors, Gary, Lanny, and Jensen discovered that Layla posted the car on the internet. This industry's still pretty small. We found out that she ended up going to street races the next night, which really pissed us off. It was just the wrong thing to do. What Layla did was put the modifications up on the internet, which gave our competitors the unfair advantage. It makes me upset. It's just not acceptable. I assumed everything that we did to Layla's car was gonna be confidential. She was out there jeopardizing what we were actually trying to do, to win. Hi, babies. Hello, hello, hello. Mommy's so busy. We're getting ready. You wanna go check out the other competitor's car that Mama's gonna keep their booty? I sense that my team members were pretty upset at me, and I know that it's because I posted my setup on the internet. I don't want them to be upset at me. It bothers me, but I still think that we will do, we'll put up a good fight. And I just wanted to quickly just confront you guys and just let you know that I'm so sorry. It happened, and we're just, it's over. No, I, I know, mean, I just gonna, don't want you guys to be upset at me, or I didn't do it on purpose, and I know that this is a totally different level for you guys. You know, you guys are in the pro area, and for me, I'm just a little old person coming from the bottom, you know, and I'm just like, woohoo, I got some stuff that's, on my car. Yeah. You can't really blame her because she has this whole new engine set up and she's ready to, you know, she just wants to go out and just like show this thing off. I think we should just forget about it as much as we can and just concentrate yeah. on what we gotta do. Right. I was ready to kill you though, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I was like, how the hell is everybody out how much horsepower you had? It's cool. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. it. All right. Just I'll make us proud. Yeah, I'll give you my best, you guys. We're gonna give them all we got for sure. I mean, no matter if they already know what we have, we still think that we'll do all right. It's really gonna mean a lot to Layla to win this race. And I think if she wins, it's really gonna bring her confidence level way high. Hey, I'm gonna finally watch you race. <laughs> My mom's ever seen me race, legally or illegally. So she's been waiting for an opportunity to come down and see me run. It's such a pleasure that Obadiah's finally racing legally. It is an unbelievable experience for him that I, can, I can't even imagine how he feels. He is that excited about it. So to win this race is a dream for him. Obi and Layla will each make a separate test run to check their car's performance before the big race. Layla is up first. I love racing. It's just the whole adrenaline rush of knowing that people are staring at you and you're working up against yourself. Right when you start off, I mean, just the power that just throws you back in your seat. and You know, you're trying to hold on to the steering wheel and shift and concentrate on going straight. It's just anticipation of the lights and then you go. Pulling up to that line to get ready to race, your heart rate just starts pumping, and you're just like in this nirvana of just a rush of adrenaline. It's so powerful, it's so, it's so overwhelming, it just takes you, and you're lost in it. That rush is the whole life of why you do it. And right when you're about to race, you just really relax up and you just let the car go and you just fly, and it's just a big rush. run that I just did was a test run that sucked. Mainly, I just want to make sure I focus on what I got to do. That's all you got to do. You, your car can only run as fast as it can run, so just focus on what you got to do. And I'm not even worried about her right now.
Things that I have to do to make the next one better, hopefully, is just really focus. Go sit there and wait. I don't care how long it takes him to stay. Just sit there and just, just, keep, just keep revving the thing. I'm going to do my best. All of it probably comes down to driver. Both of them are probably making the power that they've never felt before. And it all comes down to where if they're going to be able to take that power or if the drivetrain on either car is going to be able to take that power. They have a problem with the starter. It has a bad solenoid inside. So it goes. Yeah, there you go. This track we're running at is a eighth mile track, which is a little bit shorter of a quarter mile. The goal is to get that thing launching from zero to 60, and then when to hit a big boost of nitrous to fire it the rest of the way down the track. Dude, you're ready to go, dude. Just hold on to this pass, because the nitrous is set. Nitrous, everything's ready to go. This race will be won or lost at the starting line. If this guy does not launch the car the right way, this drivetrain will break. I'm trying to stay calm, because if I let the nerves get me, then I won't focus. What I got to concentrate right now on is just basically my shift points, and then we hit that nitrous at the right point. disappointed in myself. I feel that I could have done better. I really wish that I would have had more practice. I snapped the asshole right off the line, dude. I told you I came out here to win, and I, that's what I came out here to do. I don't care what I had to do to do it. We had a car that could beat him. It's just she needed more seat time. I got to give it up to her, because to jump in with that much power, that much pressure, she did good. I mean, yeah. she did a lot better than we thought she was going to do. He broke an axle on that race. You give her about a good, like, three more three, four more times on that car, I know she would smoke him. <laughs> if she sticks at it, she could, she could make something out of it. It lasted down the track. You know, sorry about the axle breaking. Oh, that's all right. I guess that's the next part of, you know, making big power. You know, stage you're, two. Yep, now for stage two. We're at, like, stage ten already. Yeah. 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 I got so upset at myself. I was hitting the steering wheel. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 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 You did it over until you crossed that finish line. Yeah. So. Working with these guys, is it, it's such a pleasure to me. They built the car. Star of a show, you know, it's just, it's, it's oh, so man. dope. It's so dope. I'm loving it every day. Of it. <laughs> that felt pretty good when you launch it like really oh, high RPM. Yeah. Dude, I love it, yeah. man. I just wish I could have kept going and more practicing and just yeah. Yeah. give me more. I told you guys I wouldn't oh, let yeah. you guys down. Thanks, so Charles is buying us dinner. Oh, Charles, yeah, that's yeah. what you said. You said he was going to buy dinner. <laughs> I don't know what our future is going to hold. I am basically leaving it up to destiny. I'm very proud of my son because he's pursued his love and his passion. And hopefully now that he's learned the legal way to do it, and that he'll find a way to keep himself out of jail and enjoy what he loves. This whole thing has been a huge learning experience. I'm totally thankful for everything. I see in my future me practicing like crazy. You know, it was a money issue before as far as getting the part, and now I have it. So now I have the platform to where I can go out there and actually practice. You never know, I might have some kind of career that might spawn off from letting everybody see what I can do on the track. So going in this race, to me, means a lot. It's such a pleasure to me. It's like a dream all come true, you know? We'll see you next time at the next race track. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
races to the glitzy $130 million industry of flashy cars, fashion, music, and style. Two competitive racers from different parts of the scene hook up with the best tuners in the industry. This is the fast and fearless story of their meager machines transformed into high-speed street rockets. Just let the car go and fly. Once I get behind that wheel, it's like... In the end, they'll square off at the drag strip to answer the only question that matters to a racer. Whose car is faster? Whether they race them illegally on the streets or at sanctioned drag strip events, speed enthusiasts have one goal, to be faster than everybody else. Right now, we're gonna head over to the Ontario racing area, kind of where a lot of cars hang out. 22-year-old Obi Logue has been street racing since age 16. He owns a turbocharged all-wheel drive 1990 Eagle Talon. A lot of my big races have been with high horsepower cars, but on the street. I live on the edge a little bit, so you don't, you don't always play by the rules. Obi's competitor, 24-year-old Layla Flores, is a wife, mother, and street racing fanatic who runs her car at the legal tracks instead of the streets. Layla drives a turbocharged front-wheel drive 1997 Honda Civic Coupe. I honestly, I don't like the whole street racing scene. I'd much rather drive to the tracks, get a printout, you know your times, you get more respect. Two racers, two different worlds, meet on the same track to compete for bragging rights and to see who's faster. In countless parking lots, hundreds of cars and drivers gather each night to mix it up in the underground world of illegal street racing. You know what, being at the street races, we do it because we love it. It becomes a lifestyle. You just grow into it. It's almost like a drug. I mean, it's like a half illegal, half illegal form of a drug. Like any addiction, street racing carries its share of risks and potentially dangerous consequences. I've gotten into a lot of trouble at the street races. I've been hit for probably every ticket in the book. They arrested me. They uh, try to get me for a DUI, try to get me for evading a peace officer. Anything that a cop can hit you for, I've probably been hit for. With cars traveling in uncontrolled environments, upwards of 100 miles an hour, accidents can injure or kill both racers and bystanders. My mom's thoughts on me racing have been don't get caught since my racing career has basically been on the street and doing things illegally. I think mainly I'm concerned about his safety, so I've never watched him race. I would love to watch my son race legally. That's my dream for him. All it takes right now is one cop to come rolling through here, hit his lights, and just start talking over the microphone, get out of here, we're gonna start calling this, and pretty much everyone just jumps into the cars and we all just scatter. We're gone. If a cop moves us from this spot, which is the meetup spot, we're going to a trap. The rules of street racing are there pretty much aren't any rules of street racing. We look for cars that we can beat, but at the same time we look for cars that are that are gonna be competitive enough to gamble. You know, sometimes we're not out there to win money, sometimes we just go out there just to run for fun. What's up, man? You wanna run today? Yeah, I was thinking about it. Wanna run 240? What's up? Wanna run 240? 240? I'm out of luck. Alright. So basically right now we just hooked up a nice little little run for my boy here. And uh, we're gonna head over to our private track. It's nice, it's flat, it's pretty long, got enough time to stop. With the cover of darkness in deserted industrial areas and next to freeways. Street racers run their cars anywhere they can mask their roaring engines and avoid the police. This is my girl here. She's basically going to flag the race. The more I got to know him and the more of a passion he showed for this, the more interested I became in it. And the adrenaline rush is the same for me as it is for him. <laughs> That just mean that uh, that car won. So we know what happened. That's free, easy money right there. Go all down there, get paid, get your money, head out. Pretty much the uh, import racing culture is, it's like a whole family. You know, we have a passion. We love what we do. We live it day in, day out. And it's just a chance to go out there and prove what we can do to our cars. And hey, mine's bigger than yours is. So it's, it's fun. It's what we live for. The track provides racers a legal alternative to racing on the streets. And that's where Layla first discovered the rush of getting behind the wheel. 
Sergio actually bought the car before we were married. He actually started the racing, actually. I was a little more of the behind the scenes type of helping him out working on the car. I always thought, hey, I can maybe do better or, you know, I can go out there and race. Yeah, it was it was basically my dream to um, race. And when Layla like, began to put a lot of interest in it, I was still feeling kind of, you know, jealous. Sergio didn't want to talk to me about it. He's like, nope, that's it. You're not going to race the cart. My cart's in my name. And I really, I tried to explain to him, I love what I do. When I'm out there on the track or working on the car, I'm in total peace. He always told me, I'm going to be jealous of you. I'm going to hate you for this. It's caused great turmoil in our relationship. It's possible that racing could destroy everything that we have. So I just hope that she realizes that that can happen. To balance between being a racer and a mother is very difficult. I mean, it just can't be one day a month. It has to be a huge part of your life. I'll say, you know, a huge part of my attention, energy, and my free time has totally gone into this car. She has to put 100% down, and someone in there is going to suffer. You stay with Daddy. You eat, eat, okay? You eat, eat. Hey. Papa, I love you. I have to go. My priority is my son. You know, if it came down to it, of course I would choose my son over anything, but. It's all for the car, it's for what I love, my passion, my hobby, everything, it's my life. Before going pedal to pedal, both Layla and Obi will visit A-list tuners who will work with them to increase the speed of their everyday rides. Across town, for the first time, Obi meets up with his team of tuners, Dr. Charles, Chris Hansen, and Sharon Dominguez. We're here at Autolink, home of the legendary Dr. Charles Madrid. He can do whatever it takes to probably win this race. The way I got my nickname, Dr. Charles, well, I can fix cars, I can bring things back to life, just basically like a doctor would, but just don't have that much schooling and that much money he went through, so. I just basically got the nickname Dr. Charles. I guess we're gonna see what kind of car we get today. So I don't know if it's gonna be like a piece of shit or an immaculate. Uh, so today? Monday. It's yeah, Monday. It's to Monday. It's Monday morning. To get shit done. Hey, the car's here, guys. Oh, damn. The first time we saw Obi's car, that 90 Eagle Talon he drives, I was just like, oh my God, it's the car I hate. I just so despise of them from racing. It's a kind of a rivalry. I'm a Honda fanatic. I like Hondas. I'm Honda, yeah. Honda for life, dude. Honda. <laughs> <laughs> I went with the Eagle Talon because it's a really cheap car to find because a lot of people don't know what they have and what it's capable of. I just You're got it, yeah. so gonna get hooked up. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Being that it is the American version of the Mitsubishi Eclipse, it has a Mitsubishi motor in it. Yeah, I'll it. tell you one thing, Tiger. <laughs> I fucking hate these things. <laughs> I hate Mitsubishis with a passion, dude. You no. Know? Yeah. Talkers. So to hear that from him in one ear, out the other, we're all gonna have fun here. It's an all-wheel drive car. We really don't have enough time to build the motor, so Nitrous will assist everything. I mean, if we can go to the extreme, that's why we want to put nitrous oxide on it, upgrade the turbocharger, just to push it to its maximum potential. That's all we want. If it blows it on the track, we just want the win, so we want to do whatever it takes. All-wheel drive cars are known for their traction. However, making the engine more powerful puts additional stress on the drivetrain, especially the transfer case and axles. If any of those break, it will be impossible for the car to accelerate. We don't know where our competition will be, but if you're if they're still behind us, they'll yeah. push pull perfect. This is gonna be my first time playing with nitrous. If anything is making me a little sketchy, it's probably the nitrous. I'd really like to keep this car ready. <laughs> it is my daily driven vehicle. Obi sets his appointment. In two days, his car's transformation will begin. I'm so excited, I'm looking forward to it. Definitely want to get my hands dirty. I really hope they're the kind of guys that will let me work right alongside with them. Layla's tuner team consists of Gary Castillo, Jensen Oda, and Lanny Higa. I am a tuner. A tuner is a person that can calculate every single thing that needs to go into your car correctly and program the car. A tuner is not just somebody that bolts a muffler on. To me, that's just a regular mechanic. <laughs> when we found out we had a girl driver, we were like, oh. What are we going to do It's a girl? Jensen. Layla. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Gary. Hey, nice How's to meet you. How's it going? It's going pretty good. You know, I know my stuff. It's not just like I'm just this chick that I can just stand there and hee hee hee. You know, I also am pretty knowledgeable about the cars. Just checking out what she had on the car. It was set up all wrong. It was just junk what she had under the hood. I mean, I really like staying with single cam, though. I'd say scrap that single cam. Single overhead is the biggest piece of shit motor there is. I really just wanted to pull that whole thing out and just start brand new. The single overhead cam engine is limited in the amount of power it can make. However, Gary has a plan. 
If he swaps the single cam engine for a dual overhead one, the car will have the potential for twice the horsepower, twice the speed. To not want to swap to a dual overhead is just like, are you smoking crack or what, you know? <laughs> when they told me that they wanted to take out my engine and just put in a dual overhead cam, it felt like, your kid is ugly, <laughs> you know? Anybody that owns a Honda is going to want to go the dual overhead unless they want to be slow. The dual overhead cam engines are definitely a better platform. I love racing, and something's going to help me to get there quicker and a little less expensive, then I'm open to it. And I want to work with you guys. OK, there's a vacuum over there. Oh, <laughs> so. <laughs> My whole life, I've been talked down to and put down and kind of shoved under the rug. It's like, just give me that chance. So that's all I would ask for, just respect, you know? Layla schedules her appointment with Gary, Lanny, and Jensen for the following day. My crew has trap speed and but we just go out there, we set up private runs, people don't really know about us, and we'll go head up a private track and we, we get down with the big cars. We're, we're all like, hey, everyone drives slow. Yeah, right. And I see so, everybody pass us Pacific came up, and I was like, uh, okay. Well, I was just gonna catch up, that's okay. what I'm trying to do. When we're out there at the street races, it really is another like secret society that's going on. The gambling is one aspect of it, and the gambling can kind of get really ugly. There's fights that break out. Um, I've been around when they started shooting you know, over money. You get a lot of guys that are like 16 years old out there for the first time. They don't know how things, you know, work out on the streets. It's very dangerous. And that's what pretty much the cops come out there to stop. The street racing culture, I think, has gotten a lot of popularity because of the movies that have come out and kind of glamorized, Hollywoodized the whole street racing scene. And then it's OK, and then it's cool, and that nothing's going to happen to you. Whereas in reality, I've seen too many of my friends get their car taken away or get in fights and you know i mean people bring guns and i mean it's like a gang type of a thing i don't like it the way that it's become now you know i think that it's just blown out of proportion when you're street racing the biggest danger is when people cut in front of you basically two cars are lined up they both take off and they're going full throttle and uh, a lot of the idiots they don't know what's going on you know they're out at the street races just just to be there and all of a sudden you see a car trying to like bust a u-turn in the middle of the lane and uh, that's real bad. That's, that's the way a lot of people have died, and that's the way a lot of the accidents happen. It's a big risk every night when you go out, and a possibility of getting hit by a car or crashing. If a car is going down the street, and it, say, a front-wheel drive car breaks the axle, it's going to veer to that side. It's going to bang you and all of your friends, whoever's standing around you, or whoever just so happens to be in that exact section. You're going to get banged, and getting banged by a car going 60, 80, whatever mile an hour it is, it's, it's not going to be pretty. Worst part if you get pulled over by a cop is, one, you could go to jail, two, you could lose your car, or three, you get fixed to tickets that you just don't really want. Hopefully the cop's not smart enough to understand what you have under the hood, because you're constantly fixing it. So. It's not, it's not worth it. Sometimes we'll get these guys out here and they'll, they'll pretty much just walk off a track or help a cop, you know, try to stop us or something. So we get big trucks like this that'll block off a whole exit for us to get out of. And that kind of traps us in an area and we can't get out. So we kind of watch out for these kind of guys. Them and tow trucks. Tow trucks are pretty big too and they'll, they'll block us off every now and again. All it took was one time for me to get caught. And from there, just, you realize your consequence of you know, I'm busted, I'm screwed for life. So it was a scary situation. Track events are like three times a year. Street races, three times a week. I want the industry to grow. I want the street racing to not stop. I mean, of course, it's never going to stop. But you want it to get to more of a professional level. Professional sanctioned events, import sanctioned events, were, is actually built by street racers by the racers for the racers. 90% of the people that are racing in these events now, I'd say 99% of them, are actually hardcore street racers from back in the day.
We try to go to the tracks as much as possible, but you know, sometimes there's a lot of different rules that happen when you start trying to go to the track. You know, you don't get to set up the same runs that you want to. There's, you know, a, a lot more rules as far as as far as what cars can and can't.